So, let 1 bigger than p less than infinity. Look at uh, okay. So, look at L p. Now, you realize why I was using 1 and 2 and so on. It is all sequences such that okay, sigma mod x i in L 1 we just took the sum, in L 2 we squared them and now we take the p th power and take the p th root is finite. Okay. So, uh, and define for every x belonging to L p, p to be equal to sigma i equal to 1 to n mod x i to the power p raised to power 1 by p. And then you can define d p x uh, the distance All right. Uh, to be equal to x y belonging to L p. Right. Here is something which we would like to prove claim d p is a metric, this is a metric. Okay. Right, uh, we have time, okay. so let us try to prove it is a metric. So, uh, to prove this, the first step will be trying to prove something like cauchy schwarz inequality and then using that prove triangle inequality. The main problem is the triangle inequality, right? all other two properties are ok, they do not cause any problem. So, only thing is the triangle inequality. Even for 2 p equal to 2, we use Cauchy Schwarz inequality and then use that to prove that it is a norm, it is a metric on it, right. So, same route we will follow, okay. So, uh, right. So, let us, uh, uh, okay. So, so, step 1 corresponding what should be Cauchy Schwarz inequality? What should be Cauchy Schwarz inequality? Right? So, that is called, so let me write uh, that is called, it is called holders inequality. It is called holders inequality. Okay. And what does it say? So, holders inequality says the following namely, um, okay. so let us first state it in R n and then do it for general thing. So, let 1 less than p less than infinity 
1 less than q less than infinity be such that 1 over p plus 1 over q is equal to 1. Then for every a equal to say a 1, a 2, a n belong a n. Let us write another part a vector b is b 1, b 2, b n belonging to r n. If I look at product a i b i sigma i equal to 1 to n that is less than or equal to okay, summation mod a i raised to power p raised to power 1 by p into i equal to 1 to n mod b i raised to power q raised to power 1 over q. That is what uh, the inequality says. Okay. Now, uh, let us see why uh, it is a, a generalization of uh, cauchy schwarz inequality. If you take p equal to 2, if p is equal to 2, 1 over p plus 1 over q equal to 1 should give you no oh sorry uh, p equal to 2 what is q that also should be 2 so what is this 1 to n 2 raised to power 1 over 2 that is precisely cauchy schwarz inequality so then for 2 is cauchy schwarz inequality it is precisely cauchy schwarz inequality and uh, we were able to prove cauchy schwarz inequality very easily by looking at the linear combination of uh, the vector and norm a more uh, uh, general thing for this uh, another uh, route of uh, proving this is uh, via looking at uh, arithmetic geometric mean the relation between them what is the relation between the two numbers a and b? What is the relation between the arithmetic mean and the geometric mean? Arithmetic mean is always bigger than the geometric mean, right? But you think of in the arithmetic uh, in the geometric mean, you take the square root kind of, right? So instead of square root, if you think of p, one over p, you want to generalize that inequality, arithmetic mean geometric mean. So, let me state that and then prove that and then come to this uh, thing. Okay. Okay. So, here is the, so to, here is the general, if a and b are positive real numbers and p is bigger than 1 and q is a number say that 1 over p plus 1 over q is equal to 1, then a raised to power 1 over p into b raised to power 1 over q that is the geometric mean if p is equal to 2 is q equal to 2 is less than a by p plus b by q okay that is the right hand side is the arithmetic mean so it is a generalization of that once you want to go beyond powers of 2 okay so will be uh, one can prove it very nicely easily so probably I'll, I'll i think i'll go through the proof of this and then using this one proves holder's inequality that is generalization of cauchy schwarz inequality and then we'll prove what is called the triangle inequality so let us see what is the proof of this so here th things involved are p q a and b right so, the idea of the proof is first step try to bring it to a equation in one variable kind of a thing. So, here is the how do you do it? So, here is the idea of the proof. 
So, this is what you want to prove. I have everything on one side. You want to show it is less than or equal to 0, right? And now, write everything in terms of instead of a b, write in terms of a by b. a and b are two numbers given per se, right? If I write everything in terms of a by b, then one variable only comes, a and b together do not come, right? So, that is the idea. So, let us write. So, this a raised to power p, b raised to power 1 over q, what is 1 over q? Keep in mind 1 over p plus 1 over q is equal to 1. So, 1 over q is 1 minus, so write that, okay, is less than or equal to 1 and p q is equal to 1. So, th this is same as this equation, the given equation okay, is same as this equation in a by b and now q is also gone, only p is there. So, only two variables p is fixed for us, a by b you can call it as a variable t. So, what is this? If I call a by b as t, are you following what I am saying? The given thing less than or equal to 0, I divide by b, right? so that everything becomes divided by b and 1 over q write in terms of 1 minus 1 by p. So, that gives me a by b if you call it as t, t raised to power 1 over p minus 1 over p into t plus 1 over p minus 1 is less than or equal to 0. For every t bigger than a by b you have called as t. So, if you can show it for every t bigger than 0 this holds then we are through. What we are saying is for every value of t the function f of t right. So, this is the what, what is this? This is the value of the function f of t right is less than or equal to 0. That means what? If I want to show f of t is less than or equal to 0, that means what? The minimum value of the function should be 0, right? So, let us uh, and that calculus now comes to calculus. You have got a function, right, which is differentiable derivative equal to 0, that gives you what is the point of minimum, maximum, analyze, right? So, is a calculus proof. So, let us uh, look at the proof. So, we want to show f of t is less than or equal to f of 1 which is equal to 0. At 1 the value is 0, is it ok? At 1 what is the value at the point 1? That is 0. So, we want to show f is a function defined by this quantity and this function has the minimum value 0 at the point x t equal to 1. So, calculus problem now. So, how do you solve that problem in calculus? Take the derivative, derivative equal to 0 and analyze, either you can analyze the second derivative at that point or just look at left and right. So, you do that, okay. So, one variable calculus. So, let us go back. What happened? So, this is right one variable could prove calculus only, no problem. Using this, we will prove our Holder's inequality. So, what is Holder's inequality? So, let us go to Holder's inequality. So, that says that if p and q are between 1 and infinity, then the dot product right, is less than or equal to this p raised to power 1 over p into q raised to power 1 over q. Right? Generalization of the usual cauchy schwarz inequality for p equal to 2, q equal to 2, it is a usual cauchy schwarz inequality. And the proof is very simple if you look at the idea the same idea that if if the if all x i's and all y i's are zero, right? Here there is a typo here. This q is the power. Okay. This q should be the power. I'll correct it. 
if all x i or and all y i are zero, then both sides are equal. Nothing to prove, right? So assume that the vector x with component x one, x two, x n, and the vector y with components y is not zero. Divide by that, right? If required, then you get vectors with components x is equal to one, y equal to one, and you have to show that this inequality holds. So let us look at a proof of that. So that is the basic idea. So divide alpha is norm, right? Here the norm is to the p raised to power one over p. So divide the vector by each component by alpha, each component by beta, right? Call this as a i, call this as b i. Apply that lemma: a raised to power p into b raised to power q is less than or equal to, right? So apply that with this each alpha i. So you get right. Apply for each alpha i, you get this component. Okay. A raised to power p plus b raised to power q. So a i raised to power okay x i to the power p. So if you apply to each, you get this. Summation now. This is for every i. So for each component, I am applying that previous inequality, right? Now sum it both sides over i. So when you sum it up, i equal equal to one to n, i equal to one to n plus i equal to one to n. What is sigma x i to the power p? What is this quantity? What is this quantity? That is precisely alpha to the power p, right? Alpha was the norm, and this is beta to the power p. So they cancel out. So it is one over p plus one over q. That is equal to one. So it says this is less than or equal to one. So that means sigma mod alpha i by i is less than almost the same proof, right? Only instead of using that arithmetic mean is less than uh, is bigger than the geometric mean, you are using generalized. Inequality, right? A raised to power p into b raised to power q is less than or equal to a p divided by, right? So that, thing. so that is the. So now let, I think uh, let me uh, do some writing also. So we have got uh, the Holder's inequality. Using this, we want to prove that what is called Minkowski's inequality. Don't go by uh, get scared by the name. It precisely says for x and y belonging to L P, norm of x plus norm of y is less than or equal to the pth. That triangle inequality for this. So what was uh, norm? So that is defined as sigma mod x i to the power p i equal to one to n raised to power one by p. Right? That is the definition. That this is equal to this. That goes by the name Minkowski's inequality. Okay. So let us uh, give a proof of that. So proof is reasonably simple. So let us look at the left hand side. So that is norm of x plus norm of y p. What is that quantity? So that is equal to sigma mod x i plus y i raised to power p one to n whole thing raised to power one over p. So let me raise the power p so that I don't have to write every times. So left hand side I have raised the power. So that is equal to this. Right? Now. You see, uh, here is how one thinks of a proof. From this product, from this uh, product, this is a product which is the left-hand side. I want to split it into two parts. Sum. Right-hand side is a sum. 
left hand side is a product so i have to split this left hand side into a sum somehow two terms otherwise i cannot reach the target so how i, I can uh, split it the idea is very simple so let us look at that so write this equal to summation i equal to 1 to n mod xi plus yi raised to power p minus 1 into right is it okay why i am doing that because this gives me immediately that this is less than or equal to if i look at this quantity that is less than or equal to mod xi plus mod yi so let us write that summation i equal to 1 to n xi plus yi raised to power p minus 1 into mod xi plus mod yi right using tangle inequality so that is less now let us split the two terms okay so less than or equal to summation i equal to 1 to n xi plus yi raised to power p minus 1 into mod xi plus sigma of uh, xi plus yi raised to power p minus 1 into mod of yi i equal to now i got two terms at least i am nearing the target right now idea is somehow make these two each sum right what do we want we want this quantity to be less than or equal to norm of xi plus right so how do we do that so now this product okay now let us use our holders inequality in this you remember in proving triangle inequality for two we use cauchy schwarz inequality same thing we are doing here now at this step we will use holders inequality this is one term this is another term product of these two sigma mod should be less than or equal to what is holders inequality here is holders inequality product of ai bi is less than ai to the power p raised to power 1 over p into bi raised to power q 1 over q right so here let us use holders inequality so less than or equal to so uh, sigma i equal to 1 to n xi minus yi raised to power p minus 1 so this one uh, divided by uh, raised to power p right sorry so this is my ai that is bi so uh, p minus 1 raised to power p raised to power 1 by p uh, let me write uh, because xi okay i will i will write q here and uh, instead of p let me use q for this and p for because x i is belong to uh, want power p so q raised to power 1 over q sigma mod x i to the power p i equal to 1 to n raised to power 1 by p okay is it okay i have call ai bi so ai is x i b i s are the other ones similarly plus the second term so second term will be sigma i equal to 1 to n x i oh sorry it is plus or minus i don't know so it was plus plus y i raised to power p minus 1 raised to power q raised to power 1 over q into mod of the summation mod y i raised to power p 1 to n raised to power 1 by p and what was on the left hand side keep in mind on the left hand side was mod x plus y p raised to power p so that is less than or equal to this right now one uses uh, uh, 
the fact that 1 over p plus 1 over q equal to 1. So, use that. Okay. So, what, if, what is this? So, this is p minus 1. I am just working out roughly here p minus 1 times q. So, what is that equal to? Using this fact. So, if you want q times, so 1 over q is equal to 1 over 1 over q is equal to 1 minus 1 by p. So, that is equal to p minus 1 divided by p. Right. So, if I put q here, is it okay? 1 over p plus 1 over q is 1. So, what is 1 over q? It is 1 minus 1 over p and that is p minus 1 divided by p. I q I take it there. So, this quantity is equal to 1. So, this quantity is 1. So, this quantity is q times. Uh, so, what is it? Divided by p. So, this is equal to times p. Right. So, this quantity comes out to be, so the right hand side, so let me write, it is just simplific arithmetical simplification of these powers, nothing more than that. So, mod x plus mod y p to the, there is only 1, there is not 2, p is less than or equal to this quantity that is same in both right so let me write it outside that quantity so it is summation xi plus yi summation raised to power 1 over q or p summation of xi plus yi raised to power p i equal to 1 to n so that is equal to p raised to power 1 over q into norm of x and that second term is norm of right. Can you see some relation between this and this? This is norm of, so this, this quantity is norm of x plus y, right. p raised to power 1 over p is the norm. So, it is just norm of p raised to power q, 1 over q. Okay. Uh, you can transport it on the left hand side. So, this shifted on this side. So, what do you get? So, norm of x plus y raised to power p minus 1 over when the on this side divide by both sides by this term. So, when you divide what you will get? Right is less than or equal to Is that okay? This is to the power p. Yes. This is to the power p, and this is to the power p. Okay, raised to power o p by q. Sorry, not the same. Okay. So this is uh, okay. This is okay. Let me write. So p minus. Sorry, anyway, I will be getting problem if I do not write it correctly. P minus P by Q, right? Because this thing is P by Q mod norm of x plus y raised to power P by Q, and that is power P. So, shift to the other side. And what is this quantity left hand side now? What is P minus P by Q? 1 over p plus 1 over q is equal to 1. So, that is the quantity p into 1 minus 1 over q if you like. So, that is 1 over p, p by p that is equal to 1. 
So, this quantity is just 1. So, you get the required thing that this is is less than or equal to p plus norm y. The basic idea is of the proof is going parallel to one variable uh, parallel to L 2 case, right. You first generalize Cauchy Schwarz inequality to instead of p equal to q equal to 2, right, you generalize it to Cauchy Schwarz inequality called Holder's inequality, where a product, right, is less than or equal to a sum. Basically, that is what the uh, AMGM is a product is less than or equal to sum, arithmetic mean is bigger than the geometric mean. So, generalize that quantity okay? and that gives you the holders inequality and the proof from how do you use holders inequality in Minkowski's inequality is precisely from the product you want to go to the sum. So, this is a crucial step. Split the power into two parts that into minus 1 right absolute value this minus 1 into this and this gives you less than or equal to norm. So, splits into two terms right and then it is only the arithmetic jargon you simplify the powers and all that thing. So, that is okay. So, that is Minkowski's inequality. So, that says okay, on R n for every 1 less than p actually we have got uh, for 1 also you can define uh, on R n, you look at what is called uh, because it is finite. So, no problem. So, define norm of x to p to be equal to sigma mod x i i equal to 1 to n to the power p raised to power 1 over p is a norm. So, what does norm mean? It is something like absolute value. Okay, We give it as well name as norm. Okay and d p x y equal to d p of x y is equal to x minus y p is a metric. This is a metric on R n. Right. So, on the same set R n, you have got infinite number of metrics. For every p, p equal to 1 also we have done it, p equal to infinity also we have done it. Every power in between p with bigger than 1 and less than infinity also we are getting a metric. Okay. And the next thing what we will show is that it is not only a metric on R n, it is a metric on R infinity also it is a metric on well that uh, is a minor step because these are partial sums already 1 to n kind of thing we have it. Okay. And from there we will go over to what should be the next step r infinity what should be the next thing r 1 r n r infinity what should be the next thing anybody has a guess. Is there anything beyond r infinity, r to the power infinity? So, think about it till the next lecture. Okay.